A young woman without eyebrows is seated in front of a beautiful landscape. Does this sound familiar to you? This is one of the most famous works by Leonardo da Vinci. The Mona Lisa is a beautiful painting. However, it was the mystery behind the painting that intrigued people. Who was the woman, and why did da Vinci paint her? Different theories have been proposed about her identity. Many art and history buffs thought that it was a portrait of da Vinci himself, but as a woman. Others thought it was not any particular person, but the ideal of a woman. They say this is why she was painted with no eyebrows. This gave her face a more unearthly look. Still, others thought that it was a portrait of an actual woman of the time, the wife of Francesco del Giocondo. In 2005, historian Armin Schlechter of Heidelberg discovered the answer. While looking through an old manuscript, he found a small note. In this, the woman in the Mona Lisa was positively identified as Lisa del Giocondo. The artist had been paid to do her portrait after the birth of her second child. Mona, in fact, means Madame in Italian. As for her unearthly look, historians say women of this time liked to remove their eyebrows. Apparently, they thought eyebrows were not attractive. Listen and practice. One of the best ways to relieve stress is to do breathing exercises. Breathing deeply helps to relax muscles and wake up the brain. A great way to relieve stress is to read a good book. Reading an interesting novel. Will help you forget about your problems. Getting up early helps reduce stress in people's lives. Early risers feel there is more time in the day to get things done. Exercise is one of the most effective stress relievers there is. Exercising releases endorphins in your brain that make you feel good and relax your body. Listen and practice. Well, my group was great, and I loved my host family. We were all American high school students, but we all came from different states, and we had different religions and cultures. We learned that we weren't really so different. We spent every day together for four weeks, and we learned that people are people. We became such good friends, more than friends. We were like a family. I loved my host family in Costa Rica. They were so warm and friendly. They became my family too. From the first day, I felt like I was their daughter. They called me Anna. They spoke only a little English, and at first I didn't speak much Spanish, but I learned a lot of Spanish from them and in my Spanish class too. And I also learned that language is not always so important. Well, you know, sometimes a smile can say more than words. If you're in high school and you want to have a great summer, go on the experiment in international living. It was the best summer of my life. I'm sure it will be the best summer of your life too. Listen and practice. Good evening, children and parents. Thank you for coming today. My name is Dr. Carl Frist. And I am a psychologist. As you already know, the topic of tonight's speech is how to deal with conflicts at home. Everyone has small conflicts at home. That is normal. My goal is that you learn how best to deal with small conflicts before they turn into big fights.
Big fights are bad and can damage family relationships. The key to dealing with any small conflict is communication. The reason is the more we listen and talk to each other, the better we understand each other. And the better we understand each other, the less we fight. Think about the last time you got in a fight at home. It probably didn't help your problem. Fighting almost never solves problems, but listening to each other does. In conclusion, if you talk about the problems you are having openly and freely, you will probably be able to resolve them without fighting. And if you can do that, you will have a much better life. Listen and practice. When people get sick, they often get fevers. A fever is when your body temperature goes higher than normal. Throughout history, civilizations have looked for different ways to avoid and treat fevers. In the West, a lot of those remedies involved putting things on or near one's feet. I know it's weird, but it's true. In parts of Europe in the 17th century, people tried to avoid getting fevers by putting leaves in their shoes. Later in the 18th century, people in England tried to reduce their fevers by putting salt in their socks. Then, in the 19th century, in the United States, people tried putting onions on their feet to reduce fever. Today, there are still people who believe putting stuff near one's feet cures fevers, but there is no scientific evidence that it does. That is why most doctors recommend taking medicine or a cold bath to reduce fever instead. Listen and practice. On July 30th, the Florida man robbed an apartment in the town of Hollywood only to encounter the apartment's tenant on his way out the door. Uh oh. Now she knows what I look like. I need to get out of here, Wade thought, so he ran out the door. As he was driving home, he realized that he had left his cell phone in the home he had robbed. Uh-oh, now the cops have my fingerprints and lots of other information about me. I have to get that phone back. So he called his phone. Maybe he hoped that the person who answered would return the phone to him. Instead, the phone was answered by a detective who was in the house. The detective was investigating the robbery. Wade told the detective his name and said he needed his phone back. Instead, he was arrested, and the fingerprints from his phone were used to tie Wade to five other unsolved robberies. In court later that week, Wade told a judge that his phone had been stolen, but the judge didn't believe him. Listen and practice. Everybody dreams, but nobody is exactly sure why. An even greater mystery? What do our dreams actually mean? This is a question that people have been trying to answer for thousands of years. Today, scientists and doctors continue to study how our brain works and what it does while we are sleeping. Some people think that dreams can tell us about things that are happening in our everyday lives. Other people think dreams can predict what will happen in the future. 
Then, there are some people who think dreams mean nothing at all. They say dreams are just random old memories organized together by the brain to make a story. Today, scientists are looking for ways to collect useful information from dream experiments. So far, they have not been very successful. So we probably won't know the real reason for dreams anytime soon. Listen and practice. A dermatologist is a skin doctor. Dermatologists help people who have skin problems and can treat different skin diseases. People visit dermatologists if they get burned or have problems with zits. A dentist is a tooth doctor. Dentists help people keep their teeth clean and can treat tooth and gum disease. People visit dentists if they have cavities or a toothache. A pediatrician is a special doctor for children. Pediatricians help young children and can treat lots of different illnesses. Children go to pediatricians if they have the flu or a stomach ache. An oncologist is a cancer doctor. Oncologists help diagnose and treat different types of cancer. People go to oncologists if they are worried they might have cancer. Listen and practice. My name is Sally, and my biggest weakness is I procrastinate. I always wait until the last minute to do everything. I will try to finish all my schoolwork at least one day in advance. Listen and practice. My name is Jimmy, and my biggest weakness is being lazy. I just lie around the house all day and don't get anything done. I will try to set at least three realistic goals every day to help get motivated. Listen. And practice. My name is Gary, and my biggest weakness is being shy. It is really hard for me to meet new people. I will try and talk to one new person every day. Listen and practice. Hi, I'm Beth. My school is quite far from my house, so I take the subway to get there. I prefer to take the subway because I don't have to worry about getting caught in a traffic jam. It takes me about twenty minutes to get to school by subway. Listen and practice. One of the best ways to relieve stress is to do breathing exercises. Breathing deeply helps to relax muscles and wake up the brain. A great way to relieve stress is to read a good book. Reading an interesting novel. Will help you forget about your problems. Getting up early helps reduce stress in people's lives. Early risers feel there is more time in the day to get things done. Exercise is one of the most effective stress relievers there is. 
exercising releases endorphins in your brain that make you feel good and relax your body. Listen and practice. In ancient Rome, there was a special wedding tradition where guests threw rice over the bride and groom. The rice was a symbol of fertility and abundance. In South Korea, there is a special wedding tradition where the groom gives a pair of wooden ducks to the bride on the night before the wedding. The ducks symbolize fidelity and a long, happy marriage. In the United States, there is a wedding tradition where the bride throws a bouquet of flowers to all her single girlfriends. The girl who catches the bouquet is supposed to be the next one to be married. In Spain, grooms give their brides a bag or box filled with 13 gold coins. The coins are a symbol of the groom's commitment to support and care for his bride. Listen and practice. All countries have different manners. In Bangladesh, women greet each other by nodding their heads instead of shaking hands. It is also considered offensive to give money as a gift there. When you go to a restaurant in the Philippines, always let whoever is buying order first. It is rude for a guest to order before the host. In Mexico, the color purple is regarded as a color for funerals so people never give purple flowers as a gift. Listen and practice. Water pollution is often caused by chemicals released from factories and fertilizer used by farmers. The factory waste and fertilizer flows into nearby rivers and makes the water unsafe. Noise pollution is caused by a lot of things, but two major sources of noise pollution are construction sites and airports. The loud sounds cause people headaches and mental stress. Air pollution has gotten worse in many cities due to increases in car traffic. Most cars release toxic chemicals in the air that are harmful to breathe. Throwing away trash and waste that is not biodegradable, like plastics, causes soil pollution. Once the soil in an area becomes polluted, it cannot be used for agricultural purposes. Listen and practice. An earthquake is caused by a shake in the Earth's crust. The strongest earthquake ever recorded was 9.5 on the Richter magnitude scale. A tornado is a rotating column of air that stretches from a cloud to the ground. Some tornadoes have wind speeds of 480 kilometers per hour or higher. A tsunami is a series of giant water waves normally caused by an earthquake or volcanic eruption. The 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami was the deadliest in history. A drought is when an area goes for a long time without enough rain.
The deadliest drought happened in India from 1876 to 1878. It killed over 25 million people. Listen and practice. Many animal lovers volunteer at animal shelters. They help take care of pets that have no home. Many students volunteer at libraries. They help organize books and teach others how to find the books they need. Lots of nature lovers volunteer at local parks. They help keep the parks clean by picking up trash. Some doctors and nurses volunteer at health clinics in developing countries. They give free medical care to people who don't have a lot of money. Listen and practice. Note-taking in class is a great study skill. It helps you organize the information you need to study. Highlighting key information is an effective study skill for reading comprehension. Highlighting helps students remember important information from the text. Using flashcards when studying for tests is very effective. It helps students learn and remember important words. Studying in groups with classmates is a great way to learn. It helps students save time and is lots of fun. Listen and practice. In Thailand, touching another person's head is considered very rude. The reason is heads are considered the most sacred part of the body in Thai culture. In Japan, people often sit on the floor when they eat. In Argentina, people usually greet each other with a light kiss on the cheek. This is true for men and women. In Ecuador, it is considered impolite not to bring a gift when invited to dinner at someone's house. The gift does not have to be anything expensive. Flowers, wine, or chocolates are considered good gifts. Listen and practice. Mrs. Stevens lived in a small village and she had five children. She always had a lot of work. The children went to different schools and Mrs. Stevens took them there in the morning in her car. Then she bought food at the village shop and then she went home and cleaned the house, washed the clothes, and made cakes or other things. In the afternoon, she drove back to the children's schools and brought them home, and then she cooked their evening meal. Every evening she was very tired. One morning, she was in the village shop and she saw a small notice there. It said, I do cleaning for one pound fifty an hour. Telephone Miss Joan Brown, 7508. Mrs. Stevens looked around the shop. Nobody's looking, she said. That's good. Then she took her pen out of her bag and wrote under the notice, I do cleaning for nothing. Don't telephone me.
Listen and practice. Vitamin B1 is found in whole wheat, fish, peanuts, beans, and meat. Vitamin B1 helps the body maintain healthy nerve and muscle function. Vitamin B1 can also help the heart work properly. Vitamin E is found in corn, nuts, seeds, olives, and spinach. Vitamin E helps the body maintain healthy skin. It also helps lower cholesterol, prevent aging, and fight diabetes. Vitamin C is found in many fresh fruits like oranges, lemons, limes, grapefruits, and mangoes. Vitamin C helps enhance the body's ability to fight infection. It can also help protect the body from getting cancer. Vitamin B12 is found in shellfish, meats, eggs, liver, and milk. Vitamin B12 helps the body maintain healthy brain and nerve function. It also helps the body have plenty of energy. Listen and practice. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our seminar entitled Overcoming Weaknesses. For better or for worse, all of us were born with strengths and weaknesses. That is what makes us each special. The problem is our weaknesses can often get in the way of things we want. That is why I want to talk about ways to overcome weaknesses. Once you learn to overcome your weaknesses, you will be a more successful person. Now, the first step is to identify your weaknesses. The easiest way to do this is to take a personality test. You can easily find one online. Second, decide which weaknesses you really need to improve. Nobody needs to be good at everything. So, if you can focus on the skills you need to improve, it will be a better use of your time. Third, Make a plan on how you will improve your weaknesses. If you have trouble making friends, for example, make a plan to talk to five new people every week. Making a plan will guarantee you take action. Listen and practice. A lawyer is someone who is an expert of the law and represents people in court. Lawyers need to be good at dealing with people and be rational thinkers. Bill Clinton was a famous lawyer who went on to become President of the United States. A computer programmer is someone who writes computer programs and tests them. Computer programmers need to be creative and logical. Jerry Young is a famous computer programmer who helped start the popular internet search site Yahoo.com. Listen and practice. A medical doctor is someone who works to help sick people feel better. Doctors need to be patient, sympathetic, and be able to remember a lot of information. Christian Barnard was a famous doctor who performed the world's first heart transplant. A television writer is someone who writes the words that characters say on TV. Television writers need to be creative, funny, and good at working under pressure. David Cohen is a famous TV writer 
who wrote for one of the most successful TV cartoons of all time, The Simpsons. Listen and practice. I get up at 5.15 every morning and go running. Then, after I have a shower and a quick breakfast, I take the subway to work. I usually do some work on the subway. I get to work at 7 in the morning, and I usually work until 8 at night. After I get home, I have dinner. Then I read the newspaper before bed. I usually go to bed about 11 o'clock. Listen and practice. I enjoy reading. I read a lot of books, and I love going to the library. My dad likes outdoor things. He's really into sports and swimming, and he always tells me I should get more interested in sports. But Mom tells me that reading is the best way to learn. She always gives me books that she's been reading. Listen and practice. The Age of Adulthood In the United States, 16, 18, and 21 are significant ages in a person's life. A person can do new things at each age to show that he or she is no longer a child. These are all part of the transition to adulthood. After turning 16 in the United States, a person can be employed, get a driver's license, and leave home. Many high school students learn to drive and get part-time jobs soon after celebrating their 16th birthday. At 18, people in the United States can vote in government elections and join the military but they are prohibited from going into nightclubs, buying alcohol like beer or wine, or gambling until they are 21. In many Latin American countries, a young woman's 15th birthday is important. At this age, she is no longer considered to be a girl, but a woman. To mark this special day, families with 15-year-old daughters have a celebration called a quinceañera. The day begins with a young woman and her family going to church. Later, there is a party to which many guests are invited. In Japan, boys and girls are considered to be adults at the age of 20. At this age, they are allowed to vote and drink alcohol. The second Monday in January is a national holiday called Coming of Age Day. On this day, 20-year-olds celebrate by first going to a shrine with their families. Later, they listen to speeches given by city and school leaders. After that, many celebrate with family and friends late into the night. In many countries, celebrations do not stop at adulthood. People like to celebrate what they consider to be important ages, such as their 50th or 60th birthdays, or significant events such as the birth of their first child or their retirement. Listen and practice. I have a routine that I follow every morning when I get up. First, I brush my teeth. Then, I take a long, hot shower. I wash my hair every morning, but I don't use conditioner because my hair is very short. It only takes me about five minutes to blow dry my hair. Next, I put lotion on my face because my skin is dry. I apply face powder and a little blush. 
I don't use any eye makeup in the morning. Then I put on some deodorant and get dressed. After I get dressed, I brush my hair, put on some lipstick, and leave for work. Listen and practice. I arrived at Gosforth Hall late in the evening. I don't believe in ghosts, but yes, I felt a little nervous. I checked in, and the front desk clerk gave me the key and showed me to my room. I left my things in the room and came downstairs. There weren't many other guests in the hotel. There were only three. I sat in the lounge and I talked to the manager, Sarah Daniels, about her hotel. Then I had a drink and at 12 o'clock, I went upstairs to my room. Room 11 was on the top floor. I opened the door and turned on the light. It was a very big room, very old, and yes, it was a little spooky. There was an old TV on a table, but there wasn't a remote control. I turned on the TV. There was a movie on. I was happy to see that it wasn't a horror movie. I decided to watch the movie, but I was tired after my long trip, and after half an hour, I went to sleep. In the middle of the night, I suddenly woke up. I looked at my watch. It was two o'clock in the morning. The TV was off. But how? There was no remote control, and I didn't get up and turn it off. The light was on, but suddenly, the light went off too. Now I was scared. I couldn't see anything strange, but I could feel that there was somebody or something in the room. I got out of bed and turned on the light and TV again. Little by little, I started to relax, and I went to sleep again. <sighs> When I woke up, it was morning. I had breakfast and checked out. I left the hotel about 10 o'clock. I didn't see the ghost, but I definitely felt something or somebody in the room when I woke up in the night. I'm sure there was something strange in that room. I can't explain the television and the light. I want to go back because I want to see the ghost. Listen and practice. Diana Nyad grew up in South Florida, near the ocean. When she was only eight years old, she decided to be the first person to swim from Cuba to Florida, a distance of 103 miles, 166 kilometers. Diana joined her school swim team in fifth grade. After her coach watched her for 15 minutes, he said, Kid, one day, you're going to be the best swimmer in the world. He was right. Diana Nyad became an amazing swimmer, and she set many world records. From 1969 to 1979, she was the best long-distance swimmer in the world. At age 28, Diana tried to reach her childhood goal for the first time. She started swimming from Cuba to Florida. Unfortunately, after 42 hours, the weather became very bad. There was a lot of rain and wind. Diana saw that it was impossible to reach Florida, so she had to stop. One year later, 
Diana set a new record. She swam the longest distance of any swimmer, man or woman, in history, 102.5 miles, 164 kilometers, from the Bahamas to Florida. Then, Diana Nyad did not swim again for 30 years. For 30 years, Nyad worked as a TV and radio sports reporter. She was very successful, but as she got older, she wasn't happy. She felt that she needed a new challenge in her life. That's when she started thinking again about her old dream. She decided to swim from Cuba to Florida again. At the age of 60, Diana began the very difficult training. For more than a year, she swam 8 to 14 hours every day. When people asked Diana why she wanted to try the difficult swim again, she just said, It is never too late to start your dream. The ocean between Cuba and Florida is full of dangerous jellyfish and sharks. But Diana was determined to swim without a shark cage to protect her. Over the next four years, Diana started the swim from Cuba to Florida three times. But unfortunately, each time, the jellyfish bites and very bad weather stopped her. After the fourth time, Diana thought, maybe it's impossible to reach my goal. But a few days later, she changed her mind. On August 31st, 2013, 11 days after her 64th birthday, Diana Nyad jumped into the ocean near Cuba and began to swim to Florida again. Listen and practice. Hi. My name is Eric, and I'm a paramedic. I work the night shift, so my schedule is different from most people's. I get up at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and eat a small breakfast. Then I go to the gym and work out for an hour. I take a shower at the gym. I go home and do my homework because I'm taking computer programming classes. Then I make a big dinner, and I eat at about 8 o'clock at night. After dinner, I watch TV for an hour or two. Then I get dressed for work. I go to work at 10.15, and I work from 11 o'clock to 7 o'clock in the morning. I go to bed at 8 o'clock in the morning. Listen and practice. I went to the mall this morning. First, I went to the beauty salon and got my hair cut. Then, I went to a clothing store and I bought a blue sweater. After that, I stopped at the toy store. It's my son's birthday, so I bought him a video game. Next, I went to the bookstore and I found a good mystery. I like to read mysteries. Then, I went to the pet store. I have 10 tropical fish, and I need fish food. I stopped at the jewelry store, and I looked for a pair of earrings, but I didn't see anything that I liked. My last stop at the mall was the bakery, where I bought a birthday cake for my son. Then, on my way home, I stopped at a flea market, and I found a small lamp for the night table in my bedroom. Listen and practice. I arrived in the city on Friday. I took a taxi from the airport to my hotel, and I checked in. Then, I stopped at the tourist information booth. I wanted a map of the city and a bus schedule. They gave me lots of information. I sat down at a cafe ordered a cup of coffee, and looked at the map and the information about the city. Next, 
I stopped at the bank and used my ATM card to get some extra cash. I also stopped at the travel agency to check on my car rental for the weekend. I spent the rest of the afternoon in the art museum. Listen and practice. My mornings are very busy. I'm a working mother with a one-year-old baby. His name is Ricky. He wakes up at 6.30. He's usually wet, so as soon as he wakes up, I change his diaper. Of course, he's hungry, so I give him a bottle. Then I put him in his high chair, and I feed him breakfast. After breakfast, I put Ricky in his playpen, and he plays with his toys. While he plays, I pack his bag for the daycare center. He needs diapers, four bottles with formula, baby food, and, of course, his pacifier. I don't pack baby wipes, lotion, or powder because the daycare center has them. Listen and practice. I've had a busy day. The house was a mess. This morning, I cleaned the bedroom and changed the sheets. I did the laundry. I washed the clothes and folded them and put everything away. Then I cleaned the bathroom. I scrubbed the toilet, cleaned the sink, and mopped the floor. I wanted to clean the kitchen and cook, but I'm too tired. I think we'll go out for dinner tonight. I'll clean the kitchen tomorrow. Listen and practice. I had a lot of plans for today. This morning, I paid the bills. I emptied the waste baskets in the house and took out the trash. I wanted to wash the car and mow the lawn, but I couldn't because it was raining. So, I watched a soccer game on TV. After the game, I vacuumed the carpets and polished the furniture. Listen and practice. Can employees learn to be more creative? Many business owners say yes. Big companies like American Express, Microsoft, FedEx Office, and Disney want their employees to be creative, to think in new and interesting ways. These companies pay billions of dollars for creativity classes for their employees. In some creativity classes, employees play games together in a classroom. In other classes, they do exciting sports together outside. For example, at the Playtime Company, a successful advertising company, employees go whitewater rafting and rock climbing together. All of these activities help employees to think in new ways. In creativity classes, teachers also give employees important advice. Relax. When people relax, they can think better. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. No one is perfect. Just try to do your best. Great ideas sometimes come from mistakes. Think young. Children are very creative, so sometimes we need to think like children. When employees have creative ideas, companies become more successful. One successful business owner said, One creativity class helped my employees more than many years of work experience. Many other big business owners agree. Creativity classes are helping their companies. <laughs>